Welcome to this Microsoft 365 and Teams update covering the 8th to the 13th of February. We're going to focus on end user top topics as usual. So we've got some stuff for Teams, Outlook, uh, SharePoint. We're going to have a look at a couple of things which are delayed uh, and then some bite size updates and then I'll tell you how you can keep in touch. So we're going to start with some improvements to search with the personal query history. So what it's going to do is going to show you your search history across SharePoint, Online and Outlook for the web. So as you start to type, it's going to show you the sort of things that you've looked for in the past. It just saves you having to remember stuff or bookmark stuff and you can get back to previous stuff nice and easily. If you want to, you can go into settings, you can manage this setting, and you can look at your personal history. If you can't find something that you've previously seen, you can look back on your history and find that thing. So for most of us, this is coming out early to late April 2021, so I'll probably revisit this as we get a little bit closer. Okay, this is, this is quite a nice, just a human uh, interaction type thing for, for Outlook. So reactions to emails are coming to Outlook on the web, iOS and Android. So just like you would with social media, you can respond to an email. So if you send me an email, I can, I can respond to it in my, on my computer and then you will see on yours what, the way people are responding to your email. So you can see how it looks. So you can, this is, is stuff that uh, has gone off and you can see the, uh, the reactions and the way people are responding to it. Availability, so early to late March, so it's coming up uh, over the next few weeks, so maybe we revisit, re revisit that, but maybe only if, it's, uh, if it ends up being late. So new share to Teams button coming to Outlook as well. So this will send the email and the attachment. So it means that you can push uh, an email just with one click straight into uh, any, any Teams client. Now, you can do this at the moment, right? You can go to your team, go to your channel, um, click on the ellipsis, and you get the email address for for that channel. Then you can go back to Outlook, and you can you can forward it, and you can paste that address in, and it goes in. Um, this is just a lot nicer. So in Outlook, you have one button, you click it, and you can push it into a channel or a chat. So if it's a channel. Predictably, so if you think about the way other things work in Teams, if you're pushing it to a channel, it's got to be stored somewhere where where that, that, that team can, can access it. And then when you push it to a channel, um, the, it then belongs to the channel and the group rather than you as the sender. So that goes into the SharePoint site behind the team. But if you push it into a chat, just like files with a, with a Teams chat, it goes into your OneDrive and it remains yours. You can't do this with uh, emails that have got these types of restrictions on them. And you can look forward to this anytime between mid and late March this year. Okay, so now we have list rules, which are going to make it easy to get notifications of changes in uh, SharePoint lists. Now, of course, you could before I've had alerts, but this is just a nicer, a nicer way of doing it. So you can create these simple if then uh, rules and you can go to your list, click on automate, and say you'd like to create a rule. You then receive this type of notification if there's a change to, a, to, to, to an item you're interested in. You, of course, need edit permissions to do this. And this rollout has begun, and it should be complete by the end of February. So it might even be worth you popping into a SharePoint list that you've got access to now. Have a look and see whether you can do this. Let's just step back a bit. Look out for those buttons at the top and then just have a go at that yourself. Adding taxonomy columns for modern SharePoint live reviews. This is just getting a little bit easier. So when you click on add a column, then you're going to see the option to uh, to add uh, managed uh, metadata as, as a column. Uh, when you go into it, you can see here you get some extra settings and it's just going to make it a little bit easier for you to add that uh, metadata. Rolling out early March to late March, so look out for that next month. Just a reminder, you uh, probably know all about this, and you're probably already using Teams if this applies to your organization, but uh, just a quick reminder. So Skype for Business Online is going. doesn't apply to the consumer service, so the 
the, the Skype that you would use at home with your family uh, or Skype for, for business service. So the version that, that an organization may have on their own server doesn't apply to that. So you're probably already using Teams. But what I'd say to you is if you are currently using uh, your organization Skype and Teams, you've got both of them side by side, and you can have a Skype meeting or you can have a Teams meeting, regardless of what sort of Skype you have in your organization, if you have a choice, then start using Teams. Teams is not going to go away. Skype is. Um, of course, you've got to do what your organization tells you to do. But if you have a choice, then I would go Teams. Retires. 31st of July this year, so that's coming pretty soon. You may find, I'm kind of half expecting some organizations which aren't, um, that are aware of it but aren't really taking action. There's going to be a little flurry uh, uh, June and July of, of, of people trying to get caught up with teams when they realize that uh, Skype is really going. Okay, so this caused a bit of interest on social media. So uh, a new Teams plan called uh, Teams Pro. So the first I saw of this was a tweet by uh, Visa and the Panen, and apologies if I've butchered his name. So he shared his tweet uh, and it got a, a few reactions. So initial thoughts was, you know, is this gonna be a new super teams that you need to pay, pay more for? Uh, or is it just a bucket to deploy professional features into? So. Uh, there's, there's there's a free version of Teams and then there's the paid version of Teams that, that, that companies tend to use, uh, and it seems like it's just a way. It's just it's just somewhere to put the more premium features. So you're not going to charge any more for them, but it's just a way of them differentiating between the Teams that people pay for and and the, the free Teams. This also came up on some podcasts at the the weekend as well. Um, uh, Mary Jo Foley heard uh, her at Windows Weekly. That's they discussed it at their at length in there. So that's. If you're interested, look out for that podcast. So that's going to drop into uh, existing SKUs or licenses for, for Teams, um, or for, or for Microsoft 365 that includes Teams. Um, Mid-March, uh, but honestly, for us end users, we probably won't know anything about it. I'm going to go back, actually. I'm just going to revisit that. If you're using... Free teams that's free, uh, and you don't see some features that you that you would like, and you, and you see me talk about, other people talk about. This might explain why you might have the, the version that that doesn't have Teams Pro as as like a little bundle for them to drop those uh, th those features into. Running late, this revised uh, meeting share experience. So I've talked about this, so I'll get to it real quick. It just means that the tray is going from the bottom uh, of, of Teams to the, to the, to the top right-hand side. And you can see there you've got the, um, the, 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 uh, the computer, include computer sound is uh, nice and prominent at the top. So a little bit delayed. Um, meant to have been out uh, any time now, but we're, we're now looking at late March to, uh, to late April. Running late as well is this new uh, Teams calling experience. As I said before, the, the old version has been around forever, uh, and, and this new screen is going to combine uh, different features uh, and just make the calling a little bit nicer. So that's due uh, late February to mid March. Some bite size uh, improvements uh, and things that are coming. So Excel has had some improvements uh, recently. So Excel for the web, so the loading, scrolling, selection, navigating, modifying, just the speed that stuff happens because I'm as you can probably guess, a massive uh, fan of uh, of 365 and, and the cloud apps and everything you can do. But I've got to be honest, and it might just be out of habit now. Maybe I need to revisit this because, because it's got better. But out of habit, if I open an Excel spreadsheet, I always open in the app just because it's always been a better experience for me. I've got really super fast broadband here. I've got pretty good computers. Uh, so it's always worked better for me. But maybe I'll have a look at that and just see whether it, uh, it's a better experience now. Outlook, iOS, and Android extension of suggested replies. So when you're using uh, the app in Outlook, it will suggest supplies, suge suggest replies, and you can just swipe and, and select them if, if you want them. Now those suggested replies now uh, are getting rolled out into other languages as well. SharePoint is to support Lightbox for images. So 
imagine that you're a user and you're looking at something at work on, on, on SharePoint and it's got it's got an image. When you click on it, it's gonna pop up into, on this image, you're gonna get the user light box, it'll pop up into its own little light box. The uh, everything around it will, will be kind of grayed out a little bit. And it's just a nicer experience uh, uh, for looking at detailed images on the SharePoint. And lists will have versioning enabled by default. So if you create a new list in SharePoint, it's going to have versioning and it's going to keep the last 50 versions uh, by default. So nice and quick this week, that wraps us up. Keep in touch, folks. If you want different ways of consuming this or you just want a recap in a different format, you get I send regular updates to uh, to, to my Facebook uh, page. Uh, daily updates uh, on Twitter, normally Monday to Friday um, uh, during office hours uh, for, for the UK. Um, then with YouTube, if you like the videos, why don't you just keep up to that? These are rolling out every week now, so make sure you like the video. There's more chance of uh, YouTube showing it to you if you've clicked the like button. Subscribe so that you keep in touch. But then of course remember to click all on that bell at the end, just so that every time, every weekend when I, when I roll one out, it pops up and then you spend 15 minutes with me and then you're up to date. LinkedIn, I do a weekly update on there. So that's just a written version of, uh, of this. If you prefer to just read through it in your own time with some supporting links, you'll find that on there. Uh, if you just want a bit of audio, if you're a podcast person, then listen to the podcast or subscribe to the podcast and then on the website. So if you are only interested in Teams or you're only interested in SharePoint, whatever it might be, you can go to the website, filter by that topic and you'll see all the updates uh, for, for that. And from a searching point of view, just look out for Super Simple 365 and you will find me. All right, folks, we're done. See you next week.